Imagine owning an affordable desktop machine that could do both laser engraving and precision SLA 3D printing. Allow me to introduce the Sapphire Laser Engraving System. Before I tell you more, I'm going to start a job on each of these two machines that will complete by the end of the video. One is a thermal paper marking and the other is a ring printed and castable resin. These jobs will be shown in real time. We'll check back on the progress in a few minutes. The Sapphire is currently composed of three separate parts, the main laser scanning unit, the small 3D printing accessory, and the large 3D printing accessory. The main unit alone is capable of beautiful wood engravings, as well as extremely high quality markings on thermal paper such as that used in fax machines. It can also print hidden writing on certain types of paper that will only be visible under a UV lamp. Each main unit comes with a metal interlock plate where the substrate can be secured. In order to accomplish stereo lithography, the user needs to set the main unit on top of a smaller large 3D printing accessory and plug in the cord. For 3D printing jewelry, figurines, and other smaller hollow objects, the small accessory should be used. In this configuration, the Sapphire can create immaculate details, such as the 100 micron railing posts on this 54 mm tall Eiffel Tower. Dental prints, functional prototypes, and other larger solid objects require the large accessory since it features a resin wiper. The main unit connects to a computer via USB and is powered from a 12 volt supply, and both accessories are powered and controlled through the main unit's 7 pin mini DIN jack. The Sapphire is a highly reliable machine due to its simplicity, and its laser diode is long lasting with help from a Peltier Junction cooling element. It is also a safe machine, and only when the interlock plate, or one of the accessories, is present can the laser actually turn on. Relative to the work area, the machine is quite compact and lightweight compared to its peers, resulting in better ergonomics and lower shipping costs. Finally, nearly all the Sapphire designs are open source, and there are no legal resin use restrictions. As a 3D printer, the Sapphire has a number of advantages over bottom-up printers that require film and use a peeling step. Films, and sometimes entire tanks, generally require regular replacement, and peeling sometimes makes printing small details and large areas difficult. Since the Sapphire is designed similar to professional printers, it uses the top-down printing method, which does not need an interface layer and can optionally use a wiper. The Sapphire needs fewer supports than bottom-up printers, and it utilizes a special alternating polygon infill mode to reduce shrinkage and bulging on large, solid prints. Many prints, like these rings, require no supports whatsoever, and can be printed with a sprue already in place. Additionally, small prints are easy to remove from the build plate, since base platforms are almost never necessary. Finally, progress is a lot easier to watch on the Sapphire than on bottom-up printers, and problems can be more quickly identified. Since it uses a laser, the Sapphire has similar advantages over DLP printers, where there is always a constant fight between voxel dimensions and build area due to the limited pixel array resolution. In contrast to DLP printers, the Sapphire is extremely flexible and configurable, and voxel dimensions can be chosen at will for each of the three axes. This means that draft prints can be made very quickly and adjusted or redesigned if necessary. The laser diode's power can be adjusted from 75 to 750 milliwatts by means of direct current control, and its pulse time can be varied greatly. Neutral density filters can even be added to reduce the output power down to 10 milliwatts for very precise prints. The Sapphire supports a maximum image resolution of 4,608 pixels square, unheard of for any single array DLP projector. Many DLP printers are currently coming onto the market, but they all lack the innovation and modularity that the Sapphire possesses. Let's check on the progress of our jobs. Looks like they're more than halfway done already. The main difference between the Sapphire and other laser SLA printers is the Sapphire's lack of a mirror right underneath the build area. Users often report that this mirror seems to get dirty, and cleaning it can be difficult. Due to the presence of this mirror, as well as other factors, many laser SLA printers have a hard time producing sharp details such as fine text. By comparison, the Sapphire's laser spot size is considerably smaller than that of most of its peers at only about 75 microns, and this allows a good compromise between sharp details and smooth edges on prints. However, the most significant difference between the Sapphire and other laser SLA printers lies in the control of its galvanometers. Most printers use what is called PID control, which is outdated and suffers from tracking error, and some printers even use analog PID control cards. On the contrary, the Sapphire uses what is called state space control, which would most often be found in high-end electromechanical systems such as satellites. When combined with special digitized burst algorithms, an image can be scanned not unlike what a DLP projector would do, but with much more flexibility. Furthermore, the Sapphire's allowable scan speed is much higher than that of other printers, even reaching 8 meters per second in draft mode. The Sapphire's open source protocut software, which works on Windows, OS X, and Linux, can accept either multi-layer SVG files output by slicer or flat raster image formats to make extrusions. 
Extrusions are a convenient way to build an item with a basic shape very quickly, such as this test piece used to calibrate the large accessory size and position settings. The sapphire is not intended to replace CO2 laser tools that can cut through thick materials and engrave glass. However, it uses the most powerful 405 nanometer diode currently on the market and is quite versatile for its size. Other laser tools generally use an XY gantry, which is slow and typically noisy. The sapphire's galvanometers are silent and have nearly zero backlash, and the array of various fill patterns and burst settings can create any desired look. A unique feature of the sapphire is the active preview option, where 20 dots help to show the outline of the workpiece. This outline's position and size can be adjusted in the user interface to ensure that the engraved image is exactly where it needs to be. Additionally, the Sapphire main unit has a motorized focus adjustment so that various substrate heights can be accommodated. The Sapphire main unit and the small and large accessories are designed to be durable and reliable. Their construction is largely metal, and their electronics are as simple as possible to reduce the opportunity for bugs and crashes, as well as the need for firmware upgrades. Since the main unit operates only over USB, it can never be hacked, and it will never run into resources when working with detailed prints. All engraving and printing jobs are executed on a schedule dictated by the host computer, and job durations are calculated to within a one-second accuracy ahead of time. Laser tracing progress can be watched on the host computer in real time through ProtoCut, similar to software for a CNC mill that shows the current machining path. Each machine will be hand-assembled with care in Michigan, USA, out of domestic and foreign components. After assembly, the Sapphire main unit undergoes a mostly automated seven-step calibration process to ensure consistent and accurate operation. Well, it looks like our jobs are done. Thanks for watching.